Uh, I'm talking to voters uh, throughout the Upper Peninsula. I've visited uh, Barraga and Lance and Houghton. I was there for Tex Winter Carnival, uh, Mohawk. Uh, visited uh, family here in uh, Nagani. My wife is from Nagani, so it was good to visit uh, our family that we don't get to see all that often. And then uh, we're here in Marquette meeting with uh, local voters and Democrats. And then we're going to go to Munising and Newberry and the Sioux and St. Ignace and just a whirlwind tour. But it's, it's, it's great to be up here in the midst of winter. Well, I'm running for governor because Michigan is going in the wrong direction. And, you know, I'm the son of a teacher. Uh, I used to run early childhood programs. I know the importance of education. You know, a good education uh, produces good jobs. And, you know, what I've seen under our current governor is a billion dollar cut to our schools. It's been about a $500 per pupil cut to our local schools. Uh, cuts to universities, a 15% cut to universities like NMU. Um, you know, that's taking us in the wrong direction. And, you know, Michigan has the fourth worst unemployment rate as a result of those education cuts, but a corporate tax cut that's not creating jobs. And what our current governor decided to do was give a big corporate tax cut paid for by education cuts and his job-killing retirement tax, uh, taxes on working families and tax increases on low wage earners. So what we've got to do is get our priorities right. And uh, the key to a good job is good education. That's priority number one for me. Okay, what about the other priorities? So you say you want to get the priority tree. What, what other priorities right. do you think come after that? Well, what we have to do, and my vision for Michigan, is that we create a high-wage, high-skill, high-growth economy. Uh, the uh, uh, 50 state analysis was done of uh, projected job growth across the country. Michigan came in 49th out of 50 over the next 10 years in job growth under Governor Rick Snyder's policies. So the key is the, the states that are, are growing more rapidly with good high paying jobs invest in education. We also need healthy, vibrant, dynamic communities. And when Funding has been cut to our communities where they have a hard time paying for snow removal or police and fire services or infrastructure that hurts the quality of life. So we need to have our communities be the hubs of, to attract investment and entrepreneurs and create jobs, attract jobs. Of course, talent is one through education, quality community. Our natural resources are key. You know, uh, the Upper Peninsula uh, understands the balance between protecting and leveraging the environment and natural resources and creating good jobs. And as Great Lakes Governor, you know, I plan to do that. And uh, we need to value all of our people. Um, we've seen group after group under attack by this governor. That's the wrong direction. So what we really need is an investment strategy in our people and in our communities that strengthens the middle class and creates an economy that works for everyone, not just... Uh, no, I don't think Governor Snyder did nearly enough in helping people and businesses that are really being hit hard in this propane crisis. I've talked to my own family here that uh, ran out of propane. Uh, they were limited in uh, how much they were able to purchase. When they did purchase it, it was almost $6 a gallon. Um, you know, I spoke to President Obama uh, two days ago in East Lansing and talked to him about the, the need for help for families, for low-income families, but also middle-class families and seniors that, you know, literally may not have the cash to pay when it's over five dollars a gallon to heat their homes. Um, you know, we also need help in dealing with the shortage. Uh, that's why I asked President Obama to help um, curb exports uh, that are sending propane overseas rather than helping uh, the Midwest and particularly the Upper Peninsula with this crisis. So I think we needed more decisive action. I think the, the governor of Wisconsin was more decisive and I think we needed that kind of leadership on an uh, issue that's hurting families and hurting Well, uh, the people spoke on that issue uh, a couple of years ago. I think it's a question of how to manage that. Uh, I think the legislature did a pretty poor job in providing uh, oversight and regulation and implementation of, uh, of the medical marijuana law. Um, you know, we see a number of communities that uh, have um, uh, uh, had a hard time regulating access to marijuana um, and uh, some communities have just shut it down as a result of that. So I think uh, more needs to be done. I, you know, I want to make sure that marijuana is, you know, it, 
is not getting the hands of young people, it's only getting the hands of people who uh, have a, 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 a real prescription and it's addressing the medical need. But it is a, uh, a, a viable, important, uh, appropriate uh, medication for people who are dealing with cancer and other medications. We just need to make sure the proper regulatory framework is there. The number one issue I hear all around the state, and I heard that in Mohawk and Barraga and lots yesterday, is the job-killing Snyder retirement tax. It's not just a tax on pensions, which is really a broken promise. I'm talking to retirees who in some cases, you know, negotiated for that retirement, they budgeted for that amount they were supposed to receive, and then they're paying a tax. In some cases, it's, you know, $1,000 more in income tax. I talked to a gentleman who's paying $1,600 more per year in income tax um, that he had budgeted for for his retirement. Um, seniors and, and families are paying more in uh, property taxes due to cuts in the homestead property tax. The problem is, is that this is money that's coming out of people's pockets. They would be putting directly back in the economy. Uh, that's why economists are telling us that we're projected to be 49th out of 50 in job growth over the next 10 years. So I would reverse the Snyder job killing retirement tax and roll back the tax increases on working families and low wage earners as well. They were created along with education cuts to pay for uh, corporate tax cut, almost $2 billion that hasn't created jobs. So we need to change our direction and uh, support policies that create a strong middle class and create an economy that works for everyone. Look, we're all Michiganders and I think we all understand the importance of Detroit to our image as a state, uh, to our economy as a state, and um, you know, Detroit was, you know, beyond financial distress. I don't think there were real options there, but the question is how Detroit is helped out of bankruptcy. I mean, my criticism of this governor is that he actually, while he swore an oath to uphold the Constitution that protects and guarantees public employee pensions, he put on the chopping block those pensions of Detroit city retirees. Now, there are Detroit city retirees, they may be police and firefighters and others, actually live in the Upper Peninsula. Under Governor Snyder's proposal, they would have their pensions cut. And that's just wrong and, again, breaks a promise and hurts our economy, hurts Detroit's yeah. services were cut early by Governor Snyder, so the state needs to do its part, whether it's providing care through the Jacob Eddy Veterans Home here in Marquette or in Grand Rapids and other places around the state. And in fact, in Grand Rapids, those services were privatized and they sought workers through Craigslist, which is crazy. But um, my experience in Congress is also helpful in navigating the Veterans Administration. I had a uh, Veterans Administration hospital in my district in Battle Creek, so I worked very closely with the VA. And as governor, I'm going to do whatever it takes to make sure that veterans who have served our country, put their lives on the line, get the health and resources and health care that they need. Yeah. You know, I respect women and their right to choose. Um, and, you know, this governor feels differently. Um, you know, and it's, it really is about access to basic health care, uh, access to uh, women's preventative care that really is compromised as well with the various attacks from this legislature and this governor on women. So I respect women. I think everyone should have access to health care.